Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards present Lionel Barrymore, starring as Scrooge in Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol, on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And now, here is our distinguished host, Mr. Edward Arnold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. For 20 years now, one of the most eagerly anticipated events of the Christmas season has been Lionel Barrymore's portrayal of Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And it has become a Christmas tradition on radio on the Hall of Fame. So we'd like to pay tribute to Lionel Barrymore and to the wonderful spirit of Christmas by presenting once more his last transcribed performance of Scrooge. Now here is Frank Goss. At the fine stores where you buy Hallmark cards, you'll also find some original gift ideas. For instance, boxes of Hallmark notepapers make wonderful Christmas gifts for almost anyone you know. These notepapers have a distinctive design on each sheet. Some are reproductions of paintings by famous artists. Some are lovely flower patterns. And others are distinctive because of their smart simplicity. Hallmark notepapers are excellent to have on hand at all times for invitations, thank yous, and for all those occasions when you don't have time to write a long letter but want to dash off a newsy note. So a gift of one of these attractive boxes makes a most welcome gift indeed. They are priced at 59 cents, $1, and $2 a box. They're the perfect answer for the friends on your list who seem to have everything. Another idea for a gift, one that's enjoyed by the whole family all during the Christmas season, is the Hallmark Nativity Scene. This is a beautifully designed and executed replica of the manger at Bethlehem. It comes flat in an envelope for mailing, and then, when assembled, becomes a three-dimensional scene for use under the tree, on a table, or over the fireplace. The Hallmark Nativity Scene costs one dollar. You'll find this manger scene, as well as an impressive assortment of Hallmark note papers, at all the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. The cards with the Hallmark and crown on the back. The symbol that you look for when you care enough to send the very best. And now, Mr. Lionel Barrymore as Scrooge in Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. Oh, bless you, ladies, gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. You save us, so from Satan's power, and we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Once upon a Christmas Eve in a dank and dismal street, there stood the counting house of Scrooge and Marley. Now, that was how the sign read over the door, but as a matter of fact, Marley was long dead, and old Scrooge simply would not pay the few shillings to have a new sign put up. It was cold, bleak, biting weather, and as old Scrooge poured over his cash books, he could hear his clerk stepping about in the dreary cell where he worked. Bridget? Bob Bridget? Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Shall I hire a fiddler to accompany your dancing? Or will you perhaps do a bit of the work for which I'm paying you? I was trying to warm my hands and feet, Mr. Scrooge. Yes, sir. There's no fire in my stove. And there'll be no pay in your pocket either, if you're not careful, sir. You understand? Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Sorry, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> But Scrooge himself was quite comfortable, thank you. For beside his desk, there glowed a cheery bucket of coals. Yes, and he had need for that warmth far more than did poor Bob Cratchit. The coal within old Scrooge was like an iceberg itself. It was a coal that crackled with the freezing glance of his eyes, that nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his old cheeks, and turned his thin lips blue. It was a coal that did not thaw even at the sight of his own nephew. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Huh? What's that? I said Merry Christmas. Ah, humbug. <laughs> Christmas, a uh, humbug. You don't mean that, Uncle. I do. Merry Christmas. 
What right have you to be married? <laughs> You're poor enough. <laughs> what right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Ah, uh, humbug. Oh, come now. Don't be cross, Uncle. If I had my way, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding. Buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Oh, <laughs> now, now, Uncle. Have you... Keep Christmas your own way and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Well, very well. Let me leave it alone, then. Merry Christmas. <laughs> much good has ever done you. Oh, but it has, Uncle. It's the time of much happiness, and my family and I want to share it with you. Come, say you'll dine with us tomorrow night. Yes, good afternoon, have you? We ask nothing of you, Uncle, except to see you. And what better time than Christmas? Good afternoon. <laughs> Very well, but remember, if you change your mind... Good afternoon. A Merry Christmas, Uncle, and a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Old Scrooge had hardly gotten back to his cash books when the front door banged again. This time, there were two visitors. How do you do, sir? Have we the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. I keep his name over the door, but he died seven years ago this very night. But come, what do you want? At this glad season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, we desire to make some slight provision for the poor and destitute. Poor? Hmm. Are there no prisons? Oh, indeed, yes, sir. And the workhouses, are they still in operation? Both very busy, sir. It is on behalf of those who live in fear of prison and workhouse that we are endeavoring to raise a fund, sir. Uh, how much shall we put you down for? Nothing. Ah, you wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Mr. Scrooge, I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support prisons and workhouses, and those who are badly off must go there. But many would rather die, sir. And so decrease the surplus population. Mr. Screw. Gentlemen, I don't interfere in other people's business, for mine occupies me constantly. And so, good day, gentlemen. Good day. <laughs> That was old Scrooge to the life. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, covetous old skinflint. And so on that Christmas Eve came the hour for old Scrooge to lock up and go home. He had his usual dreary dinner and then climbed the dreary stairs to his own dreary rooms. He closed the door and locked it. And then double locked it. What was that? Chains? The rattling of chains? Bah, a mug. But was it? The chains clanked up those same stairs which Scrooge had just climbed. Step by step by step. Then they were at the door which Scrooge had just locked. And then... <gasps> In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Impossible. He never wore chains? No. Nor a cash box padlocked around his neck. Nor ledgers fettered to his wrist. Oh, why do you doubt your senses? Because of uh, uh, some little thing makes them liars and cheats. You may only be a disorder of the stomach, an undigested bit of beef. A blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. It is more gravy than grave about you. Oh, Please don't do that. No, 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 wait. I crave your pardon, ghost. I meant no harm. You believe in me or not? 
If it'll give you some small comfort, yes, I, I do. But why must spirits walk the earth? And why do they come to me? It is required of every man that if his spirit goes not forth to others while in life, it is condemned to do so after death. <laughs> oh, I wear the chain which I forged in life, even as you do now, Ebenezer, even as you do now, now forge for your own damnation. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Jacob, speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give. My doom weighs too heavily upon me. Life's opportunities escape me. Now I know no rest, no peace, only remorse. Remorse? But, but you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Oh, no. business. Oh, please don't do that. Mankind was my business. The common welfare, charity, mercy, forbearance, all were my business. Hearken to me, Ebenezer Scrooge. I am, I am, I am. Go on, go on. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance of escaping my fate. I bring you hope, Ebenezer. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> you were always a good friend of mine, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Three, Jacob? Expect the first tonight when the bell tolls one. Expect the second tomorrow night at the same hour. And the third upon the next night. Well, if it must be, I... But suppose you... No more. I cannot linger. Look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake, you remember what has passed between us. Jacob. Jacob. Oh. Old Scrooge jumped up from his chair and stared wildly about. Everything was exactly as before. The door still locked, and the fire still glowed cozily within the grate. I must have dozed off. Yes, that's, that's it. <laughs> A dream and nothing more. But once he laid his troubled head upon the pillow, Scrooge remembered the ghostly warning. There would be another visitor when the bell tolled one. The hour itself, and nothing else. <laughs> I am, sir. I am. That's my name. But, but uh, who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Huh? Long past? No, Ebenezer, your past. Ah, mine? Umbug, why mine? If you must be devil, some honest mortal, pray go elsewhere, sir. Rise and walk with me. What? I, with no more clothes than the nightgown and cap. Come, on. we will go out this window. Now, now, spirit, please. I'm but mortal. I haven't got wings. Then bear but a touch of my hand thus. Look down, Ebenezer. What do you see? Uh, a schoolroom and a child reading in a desk. A solitary child, neglected by his friend. Aye, you remember him, Scrooge? I do, I do, I do. One Christmas time, he sat there reading of Alibaba and Robinson Crusoe and the, and the wonders he should see when he grew up. Yes, I was that child's spirit. I wish... No, it's too late now. You wish what? Nothing, nothing. Uh, there was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I seem to like to give him something. That's all. Come, let us see another Christmas. 
Look again, Ebenezer. Do you know this warehouse? Yes, it is. It is the very place. Well, still a boy. I was apprenticed here. Let us go in. Oh, there, Ebenezer. Dick. Well, it's Fezziwig, bless his heart. It's Fezziwig, alive again. <laughs> no more work tonight, my boys. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas, Ebenezer. Time for the fiddler and a bit of food. Oh, dear old Fezziwig. He was a kind master to all of us. A fiddler and a bit of food. What's that to merit such praise? A poor Christmas that costs but a few pounds. A few pounds. Oh, but the happiness it brought us all. As great as if it had cost a fortune. Uh, you sigh. There's something... Nothing particular. But I should like to say a word or two to my clock, yes, no? Well, oh, that's a whole... My time grows short. One shadow more. Still, show me no more. I can't bear it. Remove me and then take me home. Oh. Scrooge was tired to complete exhaustion. And furthermore, he was back in his own bedroom. And then, in another moment, he was in bed and fast asleep. Huh? One o'clock. And yet it's still night. What? Have I slept the clock around from night to day and night again? Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, it's Mr. Scrooge you want, huh? Well, well, he's, uh, he's gone out. He's not at home. Ebenezer Scrooge, reach out your hand. You are the ghost of Christmas present. I am. Come, we must go. Whose house is this, Spirit? What poor people live in such a shabby hovel? Surely they must be some unfortunates with no man to provide. He provides as best he can on the little that you pay him. I pay him? Why, is this Bob Cratchit? Come, let us go in. Belinda, Martha, set the table, my dear. It's all but done, Mother. And so is the goose. All we want now is your dear father and Tiny Tim. He's coming now, Mother. And there's Tiny Tim on his shoulder. Hello, hello. We're home, everyone. Bob. Father. We're home, we're home. <laughs> uh, down you go, my boy. <clears throat> And here's your stool. Belinda, take your father's muffler and Martha, put the pot on the hob. Yes, Mother. Bob. Yes, my dear? Was the church service too long for little Tim? Did he behave? As good as gold and better. He told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple. And it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Poor boy. Poor boy. Oh, Father, how do you like the table? I think you do. Why do you turn away, Ebenezer? It's a hard sight to bear, Spirit. Bob Cratchit never told me that Tiny Tim was lame. A cripple and just hobble about on a crutch. And now, my dears, a toast. I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. He indeed. How should we drink to such a hard, stingy, and unfeeling man? My dear, it's Christmas Day. A time for charity, even to Mr. Scrooge. And so, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to him and to us all. Merry Christmas. And what do you say, Tiny Tim? God bless us, everyone. Spirit. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat by the chimney corner. And a crutch without an owner. Oh, no, no, kind spirit. But say he'll be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. And so, as you once said, decrease the surplus population. I take it back. I take it back, spirit. Every word of it, all. Oh, uh, my time with you is ended. Wait, spirit, wait. Please, one moment now. 
this is Scrooge was once more in his own bedroom. As he looked about him, he beheld a solemn phantom, draped all in black and hooded, coming toward him like a mist along the ground. Ebenezer Scrooge. Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? Oh, Ebenezer Scrooge. The ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specter I've yet met. Come with me. No, 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 not this place, spirit. Let's go quickly. Stay. What do you see? A maze of weeds and shaggy trees and stone slabs tilting toward the ground. Here lie the forgotten, the unloved, the unmourned. Look down. Read the words upon this stone. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. No, spirit, no, no. I'm not the man I was. Good spirit, tell me I may sponge away the writing on this terrible stone and say that I, I may yet change these shadows by an ordered life. How will you alter it? Yeah. I'll honor Christmas in my heart and keep it all the year. I, I live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Now this I promise, spirit. I do. I promise. Scrooge was on his knees. He held up his hands to the ghost in one last prayer for mercy. And as he did so, the phantom's hood and dress shrank, then collapsed and dwindled down into a bed place. <laughs> ha, ha, a bed post. Nothing more. I am safe in my own room. It was all a dream. Look, it's daylight. And church bells. Can it be Sunday? Hello down there. Hey. You, boy! Yes, sir? Tell me, my fine fella, what's today? Today, sir? Why, Christmas Day! Christmas Day? Then I haven't missed it. <laughs> boy, uh, uh, do you know the poultry shop at the corner? I should think I do, sir. Ah, a remarkable boy. Uh, and do they still have the, the prize turkey in the window? You mean the little one? No, no, the big one. It's hanging there. Oh, good. Now, go and tell him to fetch it here, my boy. Come back with the turkey and I'll give you a shilling. Come back in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. Yes, sir! <laughs> Look at him, Bob. <laughs> I'll send it to Bob Cratchit. He shan't know who sent it. <laughs> and Tiny Tim will find it twice his own size. Wonderful day. Wonderful! And now... Now to get dressed and be doing. Scrooge hurried out into the street, and to everyone he passed, he smiled and bowed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Merry madam. Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry to you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> People shook their heads Merry in glad Christmas. amazement. What had come over old Mr. Scrooge? And then, at last, the door of his nephew's house. Uncle! Uncle Scrooge! Your own uncle, indeed, nephew. Did you not invite me to Christmas dinner? Why, yes, Uncle. But yesterday... Yesterday I was a fool. Today's Christmas, and I'll keep it with you and your dear family. A very merry Christmas, Fred. And so Christmas Day passed most happily. But the next morning... Ah, the next morning, Scrooge was early at the office. Nine o'clock. 
And no Bob Cratchit. A quarter past. No Bob. Scrooge wound his watch and frowned. And waited. Cratchit? Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Step this way, sir, if you please. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. And now, what do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir. I, I am behind my time, I'm afraid. I should think you are. But it's only once a year, sir. It won't be repeated. Indeed it won't. Indeed it won't. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. Therefore, therefore, credit. Yes, sir? I am about to raise your salary. Mr. Scrooge, you don't mean it. Don't I? Ha-ha! <laughs> a Merry Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas than I've given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. We'll discuss your affairs this very afternoon, but first, first make up the fires and buy yourself a scuttle of coal. And do it before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. Or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us. And all of us. At this Christmas season, our friendly thoughts go out to you who have been with us so often during the past year. Tonight, I bring you Christmas greetings from the makers of Hallmark Cards, from the fine stores where Hallmark Cards are sold, and from all of us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. May your Christmas be merry with laughter and cheer, bright as the Christmas star. The friendliest greetings from all of us here, to you, wherever you are. And now, here again is Edward Arnold. Thank you, Frank. Next week, we are privileged to bring you a true story from the life of Mr. J. Edgar Hoover as we salute him and the FBI on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. When we meet on Sunday, Christmas will be over. So now, from all of us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame program, our warmest wishes for a most Merry Christmas to you and your family. Good night. <laughs> Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you can enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Prude. Dickens' A Christmas Carol was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Featured in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Anne Whitfield, Byron Kane, Lamont Johnson, Herb Butterfield, Polly Bear, Joseph Kearns, Ted DeCorsia, Lawrence Dobkin, John Stevenson, Richard Beals, and Stuffy Singer. This is Frank Goss. Saying good night to you until next week when we present a true story from the life of Mr. J. Edgar Hoover on the Hallmark Hall of Faith. The Christmas seals you buy and use are the most effective means of stamping out forever our nation's number one infectious disease, tuberculosis. Fight TV. Buy and use Christmas seals. Transcribed, this is the CBS Radio Network.